Well, the Ukrainians have been very clear they would like to join NATO, and Ukraine's constitution includes a provision that obligates the government to try to join. But the reality is Ukraine hasn't been given the option by NATO to do so. And so until NATO decides it wants Ukraine in and starts a membership process, uh, this whole discussion is kind of theoretical. Uh, but the reality is that Moscow has made this a priority by demanding that the door be shut to Ukraine even before it's really been opened. And so that's why everyone's right now focused on Ukraine's hypothetical future NATO membership. And there's no way that NATO will concede to that? Well, NATO has been very clear in its meetings over the past couple of weeks that its open door policy uh, will not change, which means that any country that the alliance decides to invite and meets the criteria will be able to join. Now, right now, the alliance hasn't decided to invite, you, invite Ukraine, so that does remain hypothetical, but there's unlikely to be a change to NATO's formal policy. Chris, if the Russian military buildup is a monumental head fake, and psychological warfare, and if the real strategy of Moscow is to destabilize Ukraine from within, how much success are they having on that score? Well, thus far, Ukraine doesn't look like it's being destabilized. And indeed, part of President Zelensky's strategy in rejecting the idea of a coming crisis is to help keep Ukraine as stable as possible. So he doesn't face intense domestic political pressure over the issue. Ukraine's economy has been hit, but not drastically so. And right now, Ukraine looks as stable as it's been at any point in the past couple of years. That could, of course, change if the military situation deteriorates. But right now, if Russia's strategy is to destabilize Ukraine, it doesn't look like it's working. Western sanctions on Russia. What's on the table, uh, Chris, and how effective uh, could they be in exacting an economic cost on Russia that changes President Putin's calculus? The White House has been pretty clear that it's ready to impose sanctions on day one. And I think that markets are underestimating both the willingness and the severity of the types of measures that might well be coming. Sanctions, for example, on the trading of Russian sovereign debt on several of Russia's largest banks. Uh, the White House has specifically mentioned VTB, the second largest bank in Russia. These would be really drastic sanctions, far above what uh, the U.S. imposed after the annexation of Crimea in 2014. Whether this dissuades Putin, it's hard to say. We know that Russia hasn't been dissuaded by sanctions in the past. We also know that Russia historically has tended to value its foreign policy goals, even if they incur a major economic cost at home. And so we'll have to wait and see whether it changes Russia's yeah. behavior. But I think it's pretty clear that if Russia does invade, the sanctions will be quite tough.